So, here's the deal. The game we're playing today is called Season A Letter to the Future. And the gimmick is, or the premise is, the world is about to go through a pseudo-apocalypse, uh, known as the end of the season. And you are the person in charge of archiving the previous season. Because everyone is going to forget everything. Tomorrow. And so your job is to just go around this community and create an archive of what happened. If you um, work in archives, have any training in archival sciences, like me, hello, um, you are either very excited or very concerned right now. Because, basically, right, we are collecting, processing, and arranging the materials. And anything that goes through uh, in this evaluation and accessioning process, the choices we make are the only choices that matter. And the anonymous gifter, thank you for giving Ailey a tier one sub. Sounds stressful. This, I think this game is going to be super duper chill. Uh, once we boot it up, uh, you'll be able to see it. But honestly, right, this game I think is going to be super melancholy and super chill. And basically in every regard, the exact opposite of Inclinati, despite being a game that I am equally excited for. Truly the duality of video games. Uh, but basically... I heard that this is coming out on, right, it came out Tuesday, the 31st. Uh, I heard about it on the Saturday beforehand. I saw one review, I looked at the website, and then I went on a media blackout. So I don't know what to expect. We are, I have no control over, or no knowledge of what decisions we're going to have to be making. And so we're just going to hang out. And to help us with this, we've got some documents. We have the Society of American Archivists value statement and code of ethics, because we don't want to be unethical while doing this. We've got two pages from Oral History Australia, who the, are kind of at the forefront of oral history processing, uh, and accessioning. So, statements of a statement of value here, and a guidebook, some guidebooks on how to do these, with a brief summary of best practices, and then a much longer thing from the Oral History Association of the United States on how to develop an appraisal and accessioning plan for oral histories in an institutional context. A much, much, much longer document. So we'll be referring back to these throughout, uh, consulting them as we run into decisions to see what the uh, professional best practices for our job uh, tells us we should do and trying to keep these core values in mind while we are playing the game in order to see how well, you know, the game lets us do that. That's kind of the core fun thing, right? We're going to see how well the game lets us be an archivist with all of the complicated decisions, but all of the very fun decisions that Archival Appraisal lets us do. Links are going in chat for that. We're just gonna, I was just going to drop those two, because those two, I think, are the big high-level ones. This this is a lot of scrolling, so we'll be looking through them as it becomes relevant. Uh, as questions come up, we may be referring back into this document. But yes. Now, what do you say we, you know, actually get into it? I'm so excited, y'all. Oh, this game's going to be so good.
Welcome to Season, A Letter to the Future. This work of fiction was designed, developed, and produced by a team made up of different cultures, backgrounds, and beliefs. Any resemblance to real places, entities, and persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. And Leander, thank you for the 29 months of Prime. We'll stay as long as you want. Today's going to be super duper chill. Uh, but, you know, we're happy as always to have you around. Get ourselves more coffee. And just enjoy the vibes. This is what I mean when I think this game uh, is going to be super chill. Exactly, we're just prepping for the apocalypse. It's fine. It's fine. Let's do it. Well... Who are you? Who are you? I don't know, but I'm writing to you anyway. Where are you? How far in the future? Where'd you find my journal? I may never know, but you can know me from what I put down on these pages. I come from a little village in the mountains. No one has left here since before I was born. But our lives changed overnight, just a few days ago when my best friend had a prophetic dream. A vision that the Elder said means this season is going to end soon. The world is about to enter a new era. A great change is coming. Everyone was afraid. I was surrounded by questions and I began to feel how little I know. What is this season that is about to end, and why is it ending? What exactly is out there that could turn the world inside out? If there are still voices singing and laughing in the wilderness, I could record them before they're gone. I also thought of my dad who always wanted to see the outside world, but never did. So, I asked if I could leave. The Elder had one condition for letting me go, that I take what I collect to the museum vault, a palace of art and memory at the edge of the earth. She says it's the only place safe from the turmoil of a changing season. I hope that's where you're reading this now. I can't stop the change that is coming, but this time on Earth could live on in these pages. What it looks like, sounds like, how it feels to be alive right now. I'm writing to you at the crack of dawn on the morning I leave home. I can smell breakfast cooking in the other room, and I can hear my mom's voice. Amazing. We have an in wait, we have an actual index in there. Wait, lo open that back up, please. Yes, I know that that's moving. I want to open up the book again. Now, how do I how do I book? Three, two, one, hooray! 
Aww. Aww. The catalog of strangers. Fears and tales for blase children. You know we're reading this. The catalog of strangers is an introduction to the more frightful aspects of this world. A reasonable amount of fear and fun makes for prudent children. How very, um, Victorian of it. Oh, we can just fully, fully spin the book. Aw. Oh. Whee! What delight- what a delightful- What a delightful thing. Hey, guess what? Uh, this archive is already, uh, better than Final Fantasy VII's archive. Cause look at that box. That- the one- the one proper- Archival file folding box. Also, that book looks amazing, yeah. My bag and dad's camera. Ready for the great departure. Ooh. First place for what? Wandering Tale Festival 817. Oh, that's just the prize ribbon again. I was going to grab the origami. Folded by Pate. My. And the ceramic animal. Hope you like it more than you would have liked to fish, Pate. Aww. Those boxes are so expensive. Yeah, I know. I know. A stupid amount of budget goes to a couple of boxes. Insect husk. Uh, we have a bug. We have mounted... God, what a pretty bug! Aww. An old bill. This bill is worth 10 poems at the Prismatic Treasury with aesthetics that look Mes like really, really vaguely Mesopotamian, right? Like the hat with the horns looks Assyrian to me or potentially, yeah, uh, Achaemenid. Interesting. Interesting. We're already got a lot here. But man, the, the, just it's delightful. Oh. You're up. It's gonna be a beautiful morning. Aww. I'm making progress. I found the burner, camera, recorder, travel bag. Breakfast is in progress. Still gotta make a pendant. We haven't used this in so long. Good thing I saved the instructions. Just as you would use a shield to protect your body, an identity pendant protects your mind. Your thoughts, memories, everything that makes you, you. We don't wear them here in the village anymore, but if you're going into the outside world, I'll feel better when you've got a pendant shielding you. Diseases of the mind. Of the mind, like did you say? sickness. Mm-hmm. It was Dr. Fumio's last invention. Mm -hmm. He realized that some psychedelic maladies were impossible to cure, so he made the pendant to prevent them in the first place. If you have a better idea how to protect your brain from being destroyed, let's hear it. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. 
I got no clue. I'm new here. A pendant can be used to identify a body. Yep. <gasps> uh, let's skip that part. Objects have two layers, the physical and the mental. Oh, interesting. Uh, we're already getting object agency perspectives. The pendant needs to absorb both. One, collect a sentimental object for each sense. Sound, smell, feel, sight, taste. Two. Uh-huh. Feel the sense and speak aloud a memory of the object. Three. Feed the object into the burner. Huh. The memory will leave the speaker as it is transferred to the pendant. That means I'll forget the memory after I say it. Huh. It's supposed to be painless. At least. No. You must remember everything. I must remember That's everything? Uh-huh. The pendant needs this little sacrifice. I want to be sure it works. Don't be afraid. Aww. A few memories is a small price to pay for knowing you'll be safe. Okay, Aww. so... This old tape should work for our sense of sound. I remember. You and I fell asleep listening to this tape. Your dad came home. We all rested together until it got dark. an odd feeling like an absence disappearing Aww. the empty space fills itself back in until I forget that I forgot anything at all <sighs> Aww. I'm glad I'm only losing a few memories if I lost too many I wouldn't even know who you are no wait you should pick the rest of the objects I'll lose the memories but you'll have them in the pendant forever. So they should be important to you. They should be parts of your identity you want to be sure to protect. So think about what these items and what the memories would preserve about you. Interesting. Let's it do smell next. Find an object with a strong odor and that holds a piece of you. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So we are... Breakfast. No. No breakfast. The breakfast smells so good. Granite. Seaside. Darkness. Age nine. This speaks to how my mom loves me. Aww. Aww. Anyway, this is super duper interesting. Um, Because what this is doing is... Uh, using a framework that I would call like object agency, uh, but you could also use, oh, who is it? Cook talks about like, Im there's a few different people who talk about like embodied memories, right? The idea of that human memory is primarily embodied in physical records. And records is just an archival fancy way of saying, right? a physical object. Usually, right, for you know, archives purposes, is going to be mostly uh, mostly written or typed words on, on paper. But really, you can collect almost anything in this way. And... Childhood. Too sweet, too old. I always wanted to experience new things. Amazing. Uh, so, right, it's exploring that through a super, like, fantasy heavy way, uh, where, yeah, we destroy the object in order to preserve the memory. But really, when we say destroying the object, I want to turn that. 
because instead of destroying it, what if we said donating it, right? We are removing the object from a context of lived use, right? A person, right? I don't know. This is hardly a deep example, but like my, my very fancy, my very fancy uh, teapot was a gift for me uh, to my neighbors when I moved out here. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm reminded of them uh, every time I use the teapot. That memory, that use doesn't... Um, or rather, that context of use goes away if I were to give this to a local history society. If for some reason this turned out to be significant, um, you, I could give this to a local history, historical society. And they'd catalog it. And they'd probably do an interview with me about what it is, why it's significant. And all that information will be preserved. But not to me, right? The use that provokes the memory dies in the moment of donation. And so, right, there's a cool, really cool bit of archival philosophy happening in this very fancy lens, and it's, like, exaggerating it, right? The perfect memory. In a perfectly portable form. But there is something really genuine there. Anyway, uh, I'm floating here on the ginger beer because it is good for body aches, congestion, blocked nasal cavities, hot ears, upside down stomach disorder, flights of fancy, dorsal inflammation, spastic melancholia, loud dreams, pond foot, wandering tingles, moonburn, and birthdays. Uh, no guarantee applies, nothing in life is ever guaranteed, really. Freaking phenomenal. A little bit of a hint of good old-fashioned uh, late 19th century medicinal jars right there. Ooh. Dried flowers. Ancient perfume sweet. Nothing is ever lost. Ah. The dried flowers sweet are... Sweet wax honey. How I've tried to save things. Interesting. I love how as we're exploring this... Honey, wax, baby... We're, we're getting waves. these descriptive notes of scent. I was left by people I have no memory of. Aww. Nothing. I remember who my dad was. Aww. Nothing. I was born in the glow of my parents' love. And of course, right, a postcard doesn't necessarily have a lot of scent attached to it. All right, I think, I think the candle, I think the candle is delightful. Also, yes, this is, also it has text in it. As long as I burn, may the moment last and last and last and last and last and. What did you choose for smell? Let's breathe in deep. <sighs> this kind of candle keeps someone alive for the time it takes to burn. Just a few hours when death is nearby. Oh. It can be enough for last rites, last words. Oh. This was grandma's candle. She didn't want to use it. You spent a lot of time with her when you were a baby. No. I realized she wouldn't live long enough for you to remember her. Or for her to see you grow up and discover what kind of person you'd be. No. But that does, however, explain why it has that very 
almost stereotypical like folk embroidery style to it so in a way, if it's associated with, with grandmother know her, and she didn't know you and yet she loved you i don't know where love goes but it belongs to you anyway Yep. Now touch. Pick something with the texture you like. Uh huh. The lace. The lace up there looks delightful. God, I love this house. house my is... hand in my own hand. This speaks to how my mom loves me. Also, something where I'm immediately seeing that I am finding interesting. Cool, scratchy palm grains. A friend gave me this a long time ago. Right. It, it's not privileging the written word. It's not privileging paper. Cool. And Tattered brass. I always looked for other worlds. And so, it, it, it imagines archival practice as an extremely embodied thing. The binding is loose. The lace of the cover is ready to slip away. Oof. How I always wanted to meet these strangers. How dare a game make you tear up in the first hour? The first 15 minutes. Like, we're speed- we are speed running emotional damage. Try. Slime. Slime? I always had the intuition the world could change completely. Aggressive. Delicate. Mineral. I look closely. Hey mods, thank you. I know wh why are our old bills slimy? What happened there? I'm you know, I'm too curious. I am much too curious as to why there's slime on these bills. So what did you end up choosing? Okay, feel the paper. I remember. These were your grandmothers. Oh no. It's called money. She had saved it. Some superstition. When she died, we were going to throw it away. Oh but no. You, you said keep it. You said it could become important again. Like you already knew at that young age. Well, how much the world could change. We have selected a lot of things associated with our grandmother. Is this a post money world? Apparently. Oof. I'm fine. Let's do sight next. Pick something that that looks nice. No. You don't feel okay. You don't feel okay. Hugs. And this is a point where um archival practice is super duper important. Um right, because of course Especially, this is fundamentally, right, an embodied, but also an oral history, right? We are listening and remembering to the spoken memories that are triggered by objects, right? The objects can potentially contain the memories, but it's our mother who gives voice to them. 
that makes them, like, recordable. The core core thing, Archival Practice says, uh, repeatedly, all the time, uh, is... Where is it? Do, 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 do. There it is. Ethical conduct and informed consent in interviews and post-production. Just going to do this one. Right. Give people chances repeatedly, right, as we get into heavy topics, to check in and say, hey, this is... We know this is heavy. You have the right to, like, not disclose information, right? You have the right to not talk about something. And so, right, doing that check-in, doing that mutual care is super duper important in archival work. And so, you know, just pushing on, pushing on randomly because we can, not necessarily something we want to do too much. That being said, our mother does seem to want to keep going through with it, even though it's heavy, so we just need to keep an eye on that and be care have care. Save option is the beetle? You say that. Where's the, where's the bait on the insect husk? Poisoned. Blue. Shine. I look closely. Uh huh. That's just for you collecting. Being like, wow, this thing's pretty. What's the physical description for? Gray textured crumble. A friend gave me this a long time ago. Uh huh. I mean, I think it's one of those two, right? Or the book. The book looks nice too. Dignified ringer. I always looked for other worlds. It's interesting. Worn cover. How I always wanted to meet these strangers. In the very style, there's a lot of good options. Chad, are we looking, are we thinking the beetle? Like, I was going to go for the ceramic lion, but we can do the beetle. So, what did you end up choosing? When you were a little kid and I'd wash your pants, I check the pockets and find all kinds of little things you've collected Aww. off the ground. Oh no. You, you say that, Dr. Shadow. Rocks, leaves, bits of string, and bugs. It happened less and less as you got older. But I remember the afternoon I found this beautiful blue beetle in your pocket. I thought, oh, this might be the last time. And this dead insect suddenly became so precious to me. Oh. What is it in our young eyes that imbue every small thing with meaning? No. Why did we lose this? I don't think you ever did. Mm. Poor taste. We can eat breakfast. And feeds them to the burner. God, it's the memory I'll lose is the one you're forming right now. I want you to have it forever. No. Standing here, we're having a last taste of home. Hmm. 
Now you're protected by lost memories. A gem of home around your neck. This is my only condition for letting you go. You must promise me never to take the pendant off. And never tamper with it. Okay. Okay? And I'm okay with you leaving. Okay, well that's our condition of access, right? Right, that, that is our condition of access. Uh, right, because part of oral history, part of that ethical informed collecting is that the person whose story you're, you have a responsibility of care to, right? The person who shared their story with you has rights to that story because it is theirs. And so part of this, right, is something, ideally we get it in writing, but you'll see it in the literature all the time. Uh, there's this concept called a rights agreement. Documentation, get a rights agreement and a contract, and be clear about what, re what uh, uses it's going to be used for. And so you get this, ideally in writing, but definitely still talk about it, of what are the conditions under which someone can access this material. And since we have been, you know, effectively donated this miniature archive, right, condensed down into a pendant, but still a miniature archive of ourselves, the condition for use and access is that we do not tamper with it and we do not take it off. Chat, we're in this together. Do not let me forget that that is the rights agreement, because uh, we're going to be super unethical if we ignore that. I think your camera and bag are still in your room. It's time to gather them up. No. I've lost so much. How could the world ask me to lose you too? Oh. Should write down a document? True. That's a good oh, call. That is a good call. Uh, all right. Rights agreement, pendant. This agreement, pendant, uh, donated objects were, let's see, um, music tape. What did we do? We did the candle, we did the old bills, we did the insect husk, breakfast, access conditions, no removing or tampering with pendant. Success, rights agreement one. Very basic, right? Incredibly basic. This metadata is extremely insufficient for any actual use, 
But for our own documentation, I think that's a good, good enough to get going. Aw. There we are. There we were. No. We'll always be right here on this beautiful morning. Yeah. I just performed a ritual with my mom. The moment has passed, but I'll record it in these pages for you for the future. Oh, we have to choose which ones we record. Oh. Oh. And we can place it? So we sketch in. And we can rotate it. And we've got this just sort of slipped in. This very much slipped in. Material. A little bit, little bit sloppy, but that's fine. I want to record the money up here. Ooh. Are we able to get all of it? I never knew when my mom would share a memory of dad while cooking on a walk with no warning. It knocked the wind out of me. Rituals take this grief and give it a shape and a story. Filling in this journal is a ritual too, but for a loss that hasn't hit us yet. No. New stamps and conclusion unlocked. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Chat, I'm worried that we'll be playing this game for a long, long time. And by worried, I mean, uh, that's all your problem. Must be conclude ah oh, decorations. We're making it pretty, chat. I've brought tools to record the sights and sounds of this season. I'll start by recording the only place I've ever known. Oh, it's so pretty. I know, right? Uh, I'm ado I adore the sort of vague 
chrono type of this game, right, the implied time period, because obviously it's fictional, obviously the dates are wrong, um, but, like, there's this implied pastness to it that's, like, different, different from us at our desks reading the scrapbook that we are also making. But, like, we're using a Polaroid. And while Polaroids are coming back into vogue, realistically, that means this is what? The 90s? Like, the, the 80s or 90s? And that gives everything to sort of I don't know. It's hard, to, hard for me to really pin down exactly what I'm feeling here, but there's a certain quality to everything that's just not... Are there wind chimes somewhere? I can't see them, but I can hear them. Um, anyway, right, there's a certain, like, Asian quality of being in an old... Well, medieval town, realistically, right? These winding streets, this old-timey thing, 100% says medieval town to me. Uh, with the sort of worn-out pastels of the period. And so it's, like, not, not far off of contemporary, but it's just old enough to, sa to feel, like, really out of time. Well, I could listen to the old fountain. Oh, we can't run. Oh, there's no but there's no button to run. There's just the camera, the audio recorder, the ability to look at stuff, and right. I mean, are you... I mean, I'm hearing it, I just can't see it. It sounds like it's coming from inside this window, TVH. Oh, it's totally this music box right here. You're right. Public sleep music is a tradition of ours here. When the music ends, the village will begin to wake up. My village was created to survive the turning of seasons, but I don't want to just survive, I want to know life and carry it into the future. Oh good, we can edit it as we need to. I love this town.
This is Dr. Fumio and his son. The statue isn't as old as it looks. The artist wore it down to give it a feeling of ancientness and the authority that comes with it. Chess. Yeah, the text is also part of the archiving quota. Exactly. God, like they're already doing something. We're not super rushed on space right now, but they are. I expect we will be really fast of the idea that we have a page, right? However much we record is fits in a page. One by folio. And however much we record is however much we have. And so, you know, a very small scale of a very real problem. Uh, archives don't have enough space. It doesn't matter how big your archive is, it doesn't have enough space. It doesn't matter if you're only collecting digital stuff, you don't have enough space. None of the above. Uh, never, ever, ever will you be in an archive that has enough space for all the materials it wants to collect. And so, in appraisal, right, in the process of collecting material for an archive and making them accessible to the public, you have to be really strategic about what gets recorded and what gets left out. Uh, Ailey noted earlier, and my schooling agrees, 90% um, of records produced in a given year will not make it into an archive. Think about how many trillions of pages of documents, I don't know, the United States government produces in a year. 90% of those records will not be stored long term in NARA. It is physically impossible for more than that to happen, especially given that the archival team is way too small. Um, they have a pretty huge archival team and it still is too small. People have to do all of the appraisal decisions. And so you have to be super duper strategic to make sure that what you're getting is representative of the whole. And now you can try and get Dr. a lot of material. Son founded Cairo back in 776. They live on through our traditions. Right? You can do a lot here. Interesting. So we have some things. There we go. Kind of like psychedelic melodies. There's an instrument. And then there's three other murals throughout town. There are three murals celebrating Dr. Fumio's work. Last night there was a goodbye party here in the plaza. Everyone was so afraid for me. To understand that fear, to understand where I grew up, you have to know the man standing watch over the plaza, Dr. Fumio. We might... We might try and get a better photograph here. Right? Part of the goal here is to make sure that as much as possible... Yeah, I don't like that angle. I don't like that position. But like, part of the goal, right, is to make sure that we take... Oh, we can jog. Thank goodness. We can slightly jog. Let's get a little player piano. This is a healing instrument created by Dr. Fumio. It draws on the pure mountain air. Exactly, Ailey, right? That's one of the goals, I mean, that's one of the goals I have here, 
right, uh, is to be able to explore a little bit of this. And to tell, talk a little bit about what happens in archiving. What, what are some of these decisions like? Uh, Dante's little daydream of leaving this place, of seeing something weird. Well, we'll have to live it out for him, though. R.I.P. Ooh, that's another fun one. So, no filter. Uh, focal, focal distance won't make a huge difference because... There's not a lot. Except for the sake of creating the blur. That's very artistic, but I don't think I actually want to foc the focus this since that uh, happened too much. Um but look at the look at what the filters do. Right? Fair warning, Dragon Wolf. Uh, I mean, totally fair. Please watch it from the beginning. But fair warning, emotional damage. Look at look at the different qualities the different photos do. So one of my past jobs, Chad, uh, was working as a digitization photographer, working with clay tablets with Aramaic text written in them. And to do that, we actually ran it through five different photographs so we took we did a standard scan uh which just an extremely high precision extremely thin focal slice scan and then we did it in infrared and then we did an infrared negative and i don't remember what the other one we did was we did something else and then we had the negative of that because the different the different photographic styles, right, or or the different um, the the different photographic processes, cause different things within the text to pop out. Will sometimes make some things clearer. Will make some things way less clear. So, like for instance, I'm just going to highlight a specific example. We're going to center the camera right on it. The overlap between R.I.P. Dr. Fumio. And the S of the dream sickness is way clearer. Uh, I don't think it was ultraviolet. I don't think it was ultraviolet. It was something else. Uh, right? But it's way clearer on the black and white photo than it is in the no filter. On the flip side, we lose the color. Right? We lose the color that says... Hey, uh, Dr. Fumio, assuming this is Fumio, he's venerated as a medievalist saint. Right? We, we've got the, the Christian implied, uh, oral aura. So, uh, the halo attached. We've got, in old-fashioned iron sickle, we've got the red of the hood and the tunic and the hosen. And all that contrasts, right, with the... And also, right, there's a very clear difference between this color, this color, and this color. And the moment you hit that black and white, the difference between the halo, the grass, and the border gets completely eviscerated. So, black and white draws out this, but erases this. So, with modern tech, uh, black and white is also easier to store. Just, by the way. Alright, Dr. Shadow. Take care. We'll see, you, we'll see you around. We'll be playing a lot of this game, so... Uh, you know, stay tuned for when the next one's going to be. Black and white requires less processing. 
and it's easier for black and white to develop black and white films. Uh, black and white film is much more stable long term than color film. Uh, and you know, for decades, black and white was just what we had. It's just right. So, or sepia potentially. Um, ooh, look at that difference. Look at this difference. Blue on pink. In color, that's super blatant. Black and white, basically indistinguishable. Sepia tone, way more distinguishable. Well, that's super interesting. And I guess the question is, right, what's important about this, chat? What do you think is important about this? Uh, the graffiti on it? Or the mural itself. Because I love how the sepia tone looks on the mural itself. I love that how that looks. But if we are saying that what is important is uh, the graffiti... CPU tone is probably the worst, the worst thing. The all? The all. Get the layers. I mean, if we're trying to get the layers, then an, an unfiltered photo is almost certainly Dr. the best choice. Dr. said the dream sickness was caused by something very powerful. Damn it. He wasn't able to cure it. I'll need to wash that later. Ugh. I spilled coffee on my wool cloak. That's bad. Um. There's so much lore and you're living for it. True. What's this? Fish. Smells like an old man's toes dipped in cinnamon. That's descriptive. I had to drink this gross potion last night. Like my pendant, it's supposed to protect my brain. Fish. I mean, uh, chat, you know me, I'm an absolute sucker for ritual objects, right? Especially when we can get really good documentation that this just is a... That this is actually a ritual. Like that's phenomenal. Uh, sadly, you know, there's a whole there's a whole standard of museum quality uh, digitization that we have. We're gonna take like 17 photographs, and we're just not gonna be able to really capture the dimensions of that object very well, or record the associated metadata to make that useful a useful recording. Floral cur cures. Come learn medicinal plant recipes handed down from Dr. Fumio. We learn to grow cures for maladies from the outside world. Even though they seem to be long gone. It's just tradition. We mark the day Dr. Fumio cured memory excess.
Interesting. This is a case where... Ooh, that warm filter really brings it out. Now I want to make sure we get good focal length, capture the entirety of the mural, and surrounding context. That's all in focus. Remembering everything must be painful. Those murals look like books of hours. They look like medieval astrological treatises. But also, I'm unpersuaded. No, Dr. Fumio is a good person. I am sorely unpersuaded that their that their memory of Dr. Fumio is correct. Like I'm real suspicious. Ah yes, for the sin of having too many memories. I mean, I love that shot though. Even if I don't, even if I don't keep that photo, or even if I don't prefer that photo, I do quite like it. Oh good, we can at least get an archaeological sort of script. Uh... Now, I would love to actually instead go to... No? I don't get to choose? There it is. Uh, I don't get to choose a different one of Dr. Fumio here. Ah, oh, tragic. I was going to use a different one there to make that work. Tragic. But that is all right. The difference between the connotations of the quill picture and the pastel earlier is quite interesting. True. <gasps> at all of those. Ooh, there's vignetting on the warm filter. And on the high contrast. Ooh, it is... It, it, Right, by vignetting, I mean, right, there's just a hint of a pinhole effect, where if you focus in on up here, it's brighter than if it's in the borders. And I do love that. That being said, I think I want that in black and white this time. It's interesting that I look at the flowers and I'm like, you know what we should do? Black and white. We mark the day Dr. Fumio cured time misperception disorder. 
in memory of Augusta Kale. Who is Augusta? The elder sought out Dr. Fumio to cure. Oh, the mother. elder. Uh, the elder's mother. Suffering from time misperception. God, there's... Look at how much different material there is. Dr. Fumio was an important person. Uh -huh. We also just have a need to put a human face on events that are beyond our control. Yep. He may have felt just as scared and helpless as everyone else. New stamps and conclusion unlocked. Can't make it any smaller than that. All right, we're gonna do an, we're gonna do a boo boo, and we're gonna put the stamp on over text, and over the text and into the photograph. This is dubious, but I believe in us. Also, I love that. This is making my archivist brain happy. This is also making my, uh, my artistic brain, such it is. I'm not a particularly good artist, but I do like making things at least kind of aesthetically pleasing. And this is making that part of my brain very happy too. Look at how nice that is. Also, uh, historian notes. Extremely, right, clearly based on uh, probably 8th and 9th century Buddhist texts in this mural versus Just as clearly based on probably 14th, uh, 14th century European garments and like 14th or 15th century astrological treatises there. Versus over there, even more clearly, Euro medievalist. A wish fell off the tree. I'm not supposed to read them. But it might be good for you to have an example of one. Yeah. Grab it. Nope, I'm not, I'm not reading it. I can go against tradition a little for posterity. I'm not reading it. I just... Want you to have a copy leafed in. Come on. Come on. Ethics. Ethical counterbalance. I guess what? There is no correct answer um, for a lot of the ethical quandaries, right? So, we look at that and we're like, mm, well, we're not supposed to read these. Right? It is against the tradition to have the person collect this for read them. At the same time, uh, right, it is important to keep examples of them. Because that's part of the uh, cultural traditions and the intangible... The sort of mixed, tangible, and intangible cultural heritage of this community, and recording that and preserving that is important. And it's a specifically, it's an ethical, it's an ethical issue specifically because the archivist 
is also the person the ritual is targeted at, right? Presumably other people in the community are able to see these and read them. It's just not the person that they are about needs to. And so there's like this specific thing. Chat, my recommendation is in the VOD, there was a moment I zoomed in far enough for you to be able to clearly make it out. I, the collector, archivist, I'm not supposed to read those. Those are not meant for me. If you want to go back and read that, I would say, you, the user, it is absolutely meant for you. It is not about... Right? It's not... About... You. And so you can go back and read it all you want. God, I love this aesthetic. Oh, it's so... Unbelievably pretty. Holy... No. And being an old... An old medieval -y city, right? I'm sorry, there's so many places... I've been to places in France... In France that look exactly like this town. Uh, I mean, like, a town like Mont Saint-Michel is the obvious example, but I actually got a plate I want to show you guys. Speaking of embodied objects, let me grab a plate that uh, I want to show y'all. This is just a touristic plate, right? This is this is tourist kitsch, but from the town of Saint Paul du Vent in uh, southern France. It was actually made in Monaco, it looks like, uh, and then sold in the town. Now the town preserves the medieval layout from the 12th century, uh, and as you can see, right, has a very similar style to what we're seeing in the game. Let's make let's make me bigger, right? Come on, focus. An extremely similar energy. A little surrounded by hills and trees and a little bit overgrown and with these old cobbled twisty streets with old stone stone and whitewash or well tan washed uh walls and the the big clay, red clay shingled roofs. It is so much similar that I'm like, oh, oh, being in this fictional space is already stirring memories of real towns I've been in. And that's delightful. That's still absolutely delightful. I got to go to Saint Paul du Vent in. Uh. Anyway, don't. By the way, apologies for my French. Um. Just on principle. I love the fishing line as, like, art. Uh, I got to go there when I was all of, what, 16? It's the one time I've been to Southern Europe. Uh, to, we went to Italy, we went to Naples, Rome, and then flew over to Nice and toured around there. So. Caro founded 710. Caro Village was founded during the modernity. The, the modernity. Much later, Dr. Funio arrived and remade it in his image. Interesting. Interesting. The... Uh, look at it. Anyway, uh, right, I gotta go there when I was like... Uh, exactly. It's... Ah, you don't bother with my pronunciation anymore. Well, that's... Um... Good? I don't... I, mm, 
I don't know that I feel good about that, but I feel good. This flower means you're in my thoughts. Aww. The morning after the search was called off for Dad, our doorstep was covered in them. Aww. But yeah, anyway, the day we went to Saint Paul du Vin is, uh, let's see, it was when we were going to go toward an olive oil production factory. We stopped, it was on the way, and so we gotta spend a couple hours, go get lunch in this town. And like, you, we stopped outside the city walls, and it was pretty hot, extremely dry, and so the main thing, right, as I was walking, the main memory I have is seeing a bunch of older French guys playing bocce ball. Just out in the hole. Hanging out in the summer dust. And then as we went up into the city, right, the town, the, the streets get twistier and the temperature drops because it's all so, so nice and cool. And with all that stone. And we just got completely turned around and lost. Luckily, you know, pretty easy to navigate one of these towns, because up is towards the city center and down is towards the entrance. There's only one gate, so you can't really get lost. Oh, and we're already outside of town. That's it. Is it recording? Yes. Okay. How to leave home. My daughter <gasps> find a sacred square of earth lay down so you have the dirt at your back close your eyes close everything do you see for yourself? You see for the dead, for the unborn. Do you listen for yourself? You listen for the dead, for the unborn. Your ancestors are in that dirt. All the living and all the dead are holding you up. Now stand. They're still there, aren't they? It's time to move, to entangle yourself everywhere with everyone. So the next time you lay down in the dirt, you will have so much more to tell them. No. Oh, incredible. It's so pretty. And, I mean, the thing I'm immediately loving about this is just how completely steeped in tradition everything about this landscape is. I love it. And I love, uh, the thing I love even more is that while we, the player, are not a community member in this world, we, the character, are. And so, right, at this point it's worth talking about like different types of archives and what kind of archival work we're doing, because typically, right, when we think of archives, we think of like a professional institution, either a government or a university or a company that is keeping track of the records produced in the context of their work, right? So when we think, and if you're watching in the U.S., right, that's what the National Archives and Records Administration is. It is, it collects materials related to the United States people, but it primarily collects government records related to the business of government. 
The same deal with corporate archives, right? We, um, in the Final Fantasy VII stream, I mentioned the world of Coca-Cola. The world of Coca-Cola is also Coca-Cola's archives. So they keep materials related to the history of the corporation. Uh, but what we are uh, is we are a community archivist, right? We are a member of a community collecting the materials related to that community. Admittedly, right, we're a bit weird because we are from one part of a community collecting for a much larger group. So we walk kind of a weird line in there. But ultimately, right, we are an informal archivist uh, who is not collecting entirely records, um, but instead collecting a variety of artifacts, oral recording, oral histories and oral recordings, and uh, our own thoughts and interpretations into a format that can be passed down uh, and communicated. And that's cool, right? That's, that's really cool, because being in a community archive gives, or being a community archivist, gives us a lot more flexibility in what we're doing and what kinds of materials we're recording. And so this is as much an embodied subjective experience for us as it is for... Dave fixed up three bikes instead of one. Uh, give it... Right, gives us a lot more flexibility in how we record and creates us uh, this thing that is simultaneously embodied for us and uh, in embodied for everyone else. Right, a document about other people but about us equally. <gasps> Oh good, it just kind of stays. Perfect. I've got to get this shot, right? I'm sorry, landscape photography is also my jam. I'm not sorry. What are they, what are they talking about? Come on, get the, get the arch. Nah, I need that deep focus. For the moment, let's make this bigger. We can always edit it later. Hard to leave home. A required... Oh, a required thing. JCDC, hello! If it's not clear, I am already absolutely in love with this. Yeah, yeah. A village that was created as a place to heal. Is that where my instinct to try to help comes from? It's so strange to imagine I'll be shaped by places and people I haven't met yet. So strange to imagine that I might feel at home somewhere else. Aww. Uh, I guess there's also more notion of bias, be it conscious or unconscious. As you are part of the community, it's sometimes complicated to make yourself out of what you record uh, for those you don't know. Or for those who don't know, yeah. Uh, there's definitely that risk of perception, right? Uh, where there might be a complicated perception. Um, nah, we don't need... Flowers are dangerous. Uh, flowers are extremely dangerous. Ooh, we could do a stamp instead. Ooh, we could do a stamp instead of the town thing. 
Oh, but we're locked in. Oh. We can only edit it up until the moment where... Let me... Can I edit it? There we go. Right, a couple of postage stamps. Postage stamps are great archival material. I love them. They're another thing that's got a lot of personal, but personal resonance for me, because my grandfather has been an avid collector for longer than, like, since he was a small child. And <laughs> well. He's not... He, he's been sick for a long time now, and so... Well, oh, having those memories is nice. Um, what else can we put in here? Can I put the text of the flower in the book? We could, uh... Right. I don't necessarily... Right. The problem is, right, the... It's a... That's a state sentence without a context. Flower means you're in my thoughts. Because I'm not going to put the actual flower in. Flowers are extremely bad thing. Uh, f special rules apply to specimen preservation versus regular arc other types of archival material like a stamp you can remove the glue or even better you can use the adhesive on the stamp you can mount that onto acid-free paper and then you can leaf that into some sort of scrapbook a specimen there's no way to get rid of the acid inherent to organ that organic material and so you just kind of... Uh... Have this difficulty... Where... Uh... You, you, you've got this huge difficulty... Where, if you put it in with other types of material, we're going to absolutely get into trouble. Because it's going to cause damage and degradation to the rest of the archival material. That being said, there are, there are ways to care for specimens specifically, right? You can mount them, uh, you can mount them if you need to uh, preserve them in alcohol or formaldehyde, you can do that. But that's mostly for... Less for herbaria and mostly for, uh, like, animal specimens. And there's just other stuff you can do to them that's pretty helpful. Uh, please. Why are you not... Um, hello? Please move. There we go. That was weird. Will the notebook be graded at the end of the game? Well, yes and no, JCDC. I don't know for sure. I don't know exactly how they're evaluating it. Um, but I will say, right, we we are ourselves. Uh, we are both creating the notebook and reading the notebook, right? So the game opened with a future person gather op taking this book and opening it. Oh, hang on, chat. Um, did my camera die? Hello? Game? Game. Okay, my camera just lagged out. Weird. Alright. Why are we dropping all of the frames? 
OBS, please. Chat, let me know if there's a problem, if you're seeing an issue uh, with my camera lagging out, because I am seeing the camera looking really rough, uh, but the gameplay is looking fine. And I have no idea why that would be. Hmm. Spooky. God, this whole environment is so pretty. Camera is janking out. That's what I thought. God dang it. Um, alright, we're just gonna quick restart the camera. Interesting. It's only when the game's running. So the camera's janking out when the game is running, and then the moment it pauses... It stops. Oh, so helpful. I'm so grateful to it. That makes it so easy to fix. Oh, no, no. We are definitely turning off Simplify Pedaling. On my camera aim, camera smoothing. I have very few graphics opportunities. Let's just turn that off. Um. Disables that, resolution scale, gamma. Let's actually turn off the brightness just a smidge. Reducing the scale is a higher frame rate for worse 3D visuals. Let's turn that down just like 10%. Let's take a look at all of those and see if that helps. Because I suspect it's just that it's looking at that big rendering and saying, hey, there's a problem. And. Okay, let's pull this into the other window then. See if that helps, cause... Whenever... Interesting. So the moment I click into the game window, my camera freaks out. Even on pause, it freaks out. Uh, let me try something. Let's try switching over to the, uh, the built-in camera. And uh, we'll see if that helps. See if that one's more stable. Because if my external camera is doing that, that's an issue. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. All right, that's not quite centered for me, so let's try this one. Uh, yes, that makes my image quality worse, but uh, hopefully overall looks a little bit better. Because I don't like that that's lagging out like that. Uh, let's just crop that a little bit more. Whoop, loud noises. Technical difficulties. All right, let's try this again. How's that looking? We looking good? Yep, we're comfy cozy now. Brilliant. And if I go over here, this, yeah, as long as I close the game before we click back over here, this should be fine. All right. Well, drama. Ooh, I don't like that I made that brighter. I do not like that I made that, that brighter at all. Oh boy. Let's make that nice and dark. There we go. Look. 
Well, that is incredibly soothing. There is something I just incredibly soothing uh, about the little click clack of my control triggers now that I've turned off the simplified bike movement. This is also the first signs of like genu proper modernity that we've seen, by the way. Right, the game starts us off in this very out of, slightly out of time, m medieval village. Where is? It? I thought it was up on top of that. Oh, whatever. Right, it starts us off in Karo, up like behind that mountain over there. Which is very out of time, very isolated, up on the mountaintop, away from everything. We come down, and we're on this grandiose old, very medieval, uh, bridge. But, there's power lines. And there's, looks like a train track over there. And you can see cranes. Signs of, like, an industrial world. And we are like, wait, this is, this is, like, different and weird. And we can make this feel extremely out of... From the village, these cranes look like little creatures, grazing. I had no idea how huge they are. Yeah. And we get a lovely sepia tone. God. I mean, and it's all, it's not actively cared for. I mean, look, this, this bit here is completely overgrown, which suggests that the power lines are not necessarily being actively looked after. Same for actually a lot of this. There's a lot here. That's kind of not been super well cared for. Whee! It is so soothing to have this little click clack click clack of the controller. Y'all, you don't even know how like soothing it feels to me. And we're down here. We have a wooden cart, not a car, and a train track. See? Well, what a lovely space. I guess it's a minecart. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's the dream right there, Chad. Oh yeah, that's a lot. 10 out of 10. Look, I love when games realize that, hey, that thing Journey did that was super impactful. Yeah, that's good. We should, we should make moments like that to introduce us to a new space. Big fan. Uh, I wish I had a video recorder. I would literally just get a video recorder of this. Of this space. I assume the sender address 479 Silent Arrow Drive. Receiver address The Wandering Forest.
sender address Vernon Place, receiver address Caro Village. So this looks like it was a post sorting facility. Year 704. Oh. Number 0215. Import, export. Fabric, 5 rolls. Herbal tea, 20 cans. 10 roots. 1 box dry flowers. Seeds, 1 bag. The traders are cut off. Kara was gonna feel even. We're taking this. Yoink! Traders used to come to the outskirts of the village. The war put an end to this. To Karo Village. Can we just sit down? Oh, please let me just sit down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The dream. What an incredible environment! Yeah! Ah! Oh. So, chat. Ethics question. Can we take the letters? That warm filter is so good. That, that warm that warm filter is so 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 good compared to no filter just that extra that extra vibrancy to it really brings out those color the color in the box really well so far we've got a uh, plague some sort of memory like psychedelic or psychoactive plague all trade to the village and if there's no chance of the facility delivering or returning them you would argue we are obligated to well why don't we take a look over in our uh, ethics guides by the way uh, murals of doctor who's its face um, Fuzio Hero plus with this lovely out of time stuff. Um, public monumental, monumental no access restrictions. Um, I need to remember that we need to be recording recording our decisions here. Um, let's see, wish ribbon, the wish ribbon, uh. Traditional farewell ritual viewer or recipient of wishes cannot read access restrictions. Anyone except the intended recipient. Um Letters, uh, abandoned, destined for, abandoned, possibly very old, right? Let's assume, chat, I think this is a dubious assumption, but let's assume it. 
possibly greater than 100 years. The date on the inventory we found in the postage facility uh, is from 704. Let's actually click back into the game and verify that, right? Uh, back into the game. Year 704. If I remember correctly, we are currently in the year 811. I don't remember this for sure, but, um... It's an important thing. Uh, has the protagonist def defined that they want to store the knowledge for the future? Yes. Yes. This is explicitly, the world is about to end, uh, something called the turning of the season, and the character, the protagonist, is like, no, we are an archivist. Our job is to remember how this world was and store it in a museum, a, a literally sacred museum space, uh, that will protect it for the future. So yes, that is explicitly our objective, both as the player and as the player character. Now, if I remember correctly, we'll, let's see if we've got that set. Dr. Fumio, um, does it say? Who are you? We are in seven... All right. So yeah, season modernity there, and then... 704, we've got this. The, the, this thing lands here. Golden season, and then until 770 and the war. And then some sort of current season. We are somewhere, I think it, they said it was 811. Right? I, I think they said it was in 811. And so, if the, the letters are somewhere between 40 and 100 years old. Oh yeah, by the way, here is the specific thing. The Museum Vault, a palace of art and memory at the edge of the earth. Phenomenal, by the way. Uh, right, somewhere, somewhere in this space, between seven, uh, 704 and 780, is when these uh, letters were created. So. And obviously archival institutions collect letters, right? That's one of the things that they do. Uh, if you go to any historical society, you've got a whole bunch of letters from a whole bunch of places. Sender address, 1049 Everblue Lane, receiver address, Prismatic Apartment 5. And so we have a lot of these objects, and they're clearly abandoned, right? These are clearly not being sent. The question is, right, is it ethical for us to collect private correspondence from people we do not know, that were not, um, that did not consent to having their letters passed down into posterity, and whose significance we do not know. Right? Well, let's see if our code of ethics gives us any guidance here. Yeah? Society of American Archivist. So. Expand access and use. That's not super relevant. Actively contribute ideas and resources. Don't know. Collaborative opportunities. We don't know. P what are these professional standards? Uh, that's potentially mitigating harm. Sounds about right. Um, creating collections that respect the diversity found in humanity. Potentially useful. Uh, all right. Identifying and preserving essential records. 
Organize and maintain the document entry record of institutions, groups, communities, and individuals. Well, these ledgers are definitely part of that. Serving a broad range of people, okay. Accountability. Help maintain documentary evidence of actions, uh, societal experiences, functions, activities, and decision-making. Diversity. Diversity, diversity. History and memory. Preservation. Preserving materials is a means to an end of use. Okay. Um, code of ethics. Well, no elements. Uh, let's see. Decisions shall be made mindfully, aiming to ensure the preservation, authenticity, diversity, and lasting cultural and historical value of materials. Officials should be transparent about their role in the selection uh, and all decisions they made. And uh, we may need to consult. Well, we can't really consult with anyone. All right, sealed lonely space for. Uh, privacy. As appropriate mandate by law, archivists place access restrictions on collections to ensure that privacy and confidentiality are maintained, particularly for individuals and groups who have had no voice or role in the collection's creation, retention, or public use. So, you know, that suggests we can, as long as we're being transparent about it, uh, and putting appropriate restrictions on identifying information. Now, Let's take a look in the oral history here. Um, permissions and ethical use. Releases should be signed. Um, let's see. Narrator intent for access and use of an interview should always be respected. Ideally, the narrator is the donor, in which case we get a release form. Or there's a third party uh, where we have the signature of the interviewer. If the potential donor does not have the release for an interview, it is not recommended that the archives accept the donation, since access may not be provided to such recordings without exposing the archive to ethical complications. Archives with legacy oral histories in their holdings that do not have any kinds of release may consider locating the narrator or their next of kin. All right. So, you know, the oral hi in an oral history context, you know, maybe we don't need to, or maybe since we can't get that documentation, get that permission rights, given that their letters are the copyright of the, right, the owner of the record is the person who created it. If we collect this, it is the owner of the person who created it, even though we collected it. So... You know, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. Um, my instinct is that we... looks. My instinct is that it's pretty clear that the options, right? The options here are... Either they get destroyed, because all of these letters have been destroyed. Nothing in here is something we can collect. And all the stuff flowing around is not, probably not going to be historically useful. Right? Oh, I should click back into the game, huh? Uh, all the letters blowing around here are not useful. Um, not because I don't want them to be, but because we, the player, literally don't have the option to collect them. So we just need to accept that all of these letters have been destroyed. Right? This is the ravages of the inability to save everything. Right here. So the question is, for the handful of ones that we can collect, does preservation... And then we'll make this a poll, chat. We'll, we'll let you all decide. Does preservation uh, outweigh privacy? We'll give you two minutes for that. All right, so do, if you are lurking, do make sure you click into the stream window to, at the top of chat, there's a poll to, as to whether you think we should collect these letters in this abandoned uh, mail sorting facility or transport facility. We do not have the option, we do not have the option to take it without opening it.
our options are either we read them and then decide if there are things we want to put in the scrapbook, or we let keep let these people's write or uh, assume that the senders of these three letters are exercising their right to be forgotten. And that is a right, right? The right to be forgotten is a fundamental archival right, and we do not want to overstate it, or do we do not want to ignore it. Do we assume that without that documentation that they are exercising that right and leave these to be forgotten? Or do we focus, do we check these and go, or read these and go through the other evaluative processes of deciding whether these have sufficient historical and cultural value to be preserved? There is no correct answer here, which is why I'm making it your all's decision. Um, chat, get your votes in. You're at a 50-50 split, and the poll's about to end. If you're lurking, click in now and get your votes in. Urgently. The poll is about to end. Well, thank you, chat. So kind of you. So very kind of you. So, since you all very graciously uh, did not vote and instead got a 50-50 split, we're going to be collecting them, right? I am going to take the assumption that these are, well, these seasons, right? These are probably just before the war, so these are probably sometime around 770. It is 40 years later. For the large part, these recipients are probably not um, going to be found. And given how much other destruction is going on, um, these letters will be lost if we don't take them. So we're going to take them, we're going to take a look at them, and then we'll go through the rest of the appraisal process. Because you all didn't vote, and so we are going to be reading them. Yep. Hey, look. Please get this letter to Dr. Fumio. I am suffering from memory access, but I cannot travel to the village for treatment. I was praying you can instruct me by mail how to cure myself of this disease. I am unable to forget. Now I realize how important it is to gain open space in this mind. Tell me what to do. Tell me how to forget. Please get this letter to Dr. Fumio. Before setting up in Karo village, Dr. Fumio roamed the land curing people. It must have been hard when he wasn't around anymore, especially for people who couldn't travel to the village. Oof. Dear Cornelius, I've thought it over and I have to tell you, the name you picked for your baby? It's terrible. Please do not go forward with it. I pray this letter reaches you in time. Yours, Derino. Now, here's a fun question. Chad, does this have enduring cultural and historical value? Another fun and exciting question. That poor baby. Another fun and exciting question. Um, Dear Esdale, I'd be surprised if this letter reaches you. The war has become like a deranged sleeper, thrashing in bed, eyes closed tight. But notice how the soldiers strip people of their clothes first, a smaller degradation which permits everything that follows. I wish I loved you more completely when the world allowed it. You were right. The letter never made it. The season before this one, the war, seems so horrible. God. 
I love that we know that the season's gonna change, that a lot of these are gonna persist, but also that there is all this material, right? There is a deep history here despite the changing of the seasons and the forgetfulness that seems to entail. But there is an extremely deep history here. I feel like if we knew the baby's name it would have more value. True, but these are potentially the only record of uh, multiple human beings and their children, right? As an isolate? As an isolated material, I would argue this has minimal minimal value. As part of a collection? Right? If we were able to contextualize this a little bit better. Uh we would a hundred percent um be a count that as something with uh historical value for certain use communities. For genealogists? For genealogists, that's extremely valuable. Let me, I need to edit, no, please. I need to edit that. I feel nourished in these sites by the unfamiliarity of it all. These means of connection long in disuse, are certainly telling me something about the world. Will they be used again in the next season? What? Edit. Thank you. So this is Leafton, this is Le Leafton, or Leyden, this is Leyden. We've overrode it. I wish we could tip this in, adhere this into the page. Exactly, we have a whole page dedicated to Dr. Fumio. Um, let's take a look at what other things we've got here. Path out of Cairo decorations, another stamp, more stamps, there's a little cart. If we're collecting material, we're already collecting material related to Dr. Fumio. So, letters. Letters to Dr. Fumio indicating reputation and value. Very useful. And this, right, as an isolate, we don't know who Cornelius is, we don't know who Domino is, and we have little other material to say that we are going to... Uh... You know, get value out of it. That being said, we can, we don't have to make our final decisions yet, so we can hold on to this, and if we collect, if we locate other materials related to Cornelius and Derino, um, that suggests, right, that that can start to build out a coherent corpus related to a community, and then it becomes something with enduring historical value. Right now, it doesn't. But that means we need to update our document. Is there an in-game reason it has to be a scrapbook? Because that's what we've got. Um, let's see. Uh, this should be 50 through 100 years. Right, because we are a single person working in a community, and that's the restrictions the game puts on us, is that we're making a scrapbook uh, of archival material rather than creating a several hundred linear foot archive. Right? The trick is we are traveling around. We are our lone arranger. We are traveling around, we've got a limited amount of documentation to work with. And so the job is to make the choices that we make. Um, issue. Um, consent to be collected. Preservation issue. Uh, letters were never sent um, or were never received. Now, um, most letters in facility are too damaged uh, to keep, right? The other ones we were seeing around there, uh, it suggests are, we're just going to frame those as being too damaged to keep rather than 
uh, phrasing it as game says no, right? In reality, it is game says no for the vast majority of that material, but uh, let's see, value issue, um, personal correspondence equals uh, about Dr. Fumio. I should correct that. Personal correspondence about Dr. Fumio. Um, records of war. Uh, personal about naming. What has historical value? Um, what fits with collection strength and scope? Um, ethical issue can. Are these people. Let's see, I should phrase this just unknown. If people are living still, um, or whether they would consent to being remembered. There we go. My um, decision collect for now. May be weeded later. If we can obtain rights, that'd be great. Perfect. Right? Keeping a record of, as our core values say, right? Transparency is everything. Right? Code of ethics. Archivists should be transparent about their role in the selection, retention, and creation of the historical records by carefully documenting all collection-related policy decisions, including preservation, descriptive work, processing activities, and access guidelines. So that's exactly what we're doing here, right? We're being ethical about this. We are documenting what we've documented, what we've collected, what we're trying to do, personal, uh, and then the decisions we're making as far as our materials go. I'm trying to be thorough about this. Let's go get our bike. Actually, let's try and get a photo of the whole facility, huh? Actually, is there one? Is, do we get? Is there one more letter here? I don't remember. There is one more letter here, or one more something here. Oh. Oh, that's fine. Caro special. Caro specialist soothing ointments. What's this one up? in the back there. The A's and Islands. <gasps> Postcards! Oh, oh. I feel like I'm walking tipsy on the edge of the earth. We're skipping from island to island, the way a stone skips along the surface of the water, leaving little ripples. Like a kiss or two. Oh, I don't know. I just miss you today. And today. And today. XOXO, you know who. Sent to Miko Aedvis, 745 Hermitage Row, Route 4, Prismatic Grounds. I am curious about what's up in the back there, right? The the one that we can't look at. The Tiang Valley? Hey, guess where I am? I hope you looked at this this side first. I had to pay my respects to the birthplace of Manchez. There's a lot of tourists, but also a weird feeling to the place. It would take me more than a postcard to explain. Take care, Aldo. Kelio, 5C Block 20, Radiant City Apartments. And Caro Village? Don't bother trying to visit, it simply isn't that kind of location. This village was very hard to find, but if you really need it, somehow you make your way there. I just want to let you know that I'm staying here for good. 
This season can only need a violent end. It's too bright, too cheery. Stay safe, Conway. To Big Oni, Swing 4, Blissful Constellation. Chat, do we want any of these postcards? I don't want these postcards. Postcards are so much fun as archival material. Hint. We want all of these postcards. Right? According to the exact same thing that we did all of them. Right? According to the same logic that made the decision making for these other materials I can right see now. These letters that the outside world has extremes of beauty and tragedy beyond anything I've known. Uh, right. As it is right now, we 100% want to collect those, even if they don't make it into the final thing. We want to collect fairly expansively and then make decisions after the fact. And the goal is to, you know, be efficient here. Wow, there's a melancholy attached to that one filter to me. Oh, I love that. The irony of Cairo is that it's a closed-off place on the outskirts of a busy trading hub. A postal hub we hardly used is practically on our doorstep. All right, well, we have a lot, t right? What's notable is that there's no way, right? We could just like stack material over and over and over, try and put everything in here, but that's not going to be useful. That's not going to create a usable scrapbook because presumably a lot of this is pasted in. And if we, if we are tipping this in, right, if we are adhering this to the scrapbook pages, that does destroy uh, the, right, that does destroy everything else about it. Now, right, I wish I could put this in, uh, Well, God, uh, there's so much here. There's so many choices. Right? Chat, look at this. Look at these uh, Look at these differences. I can see in the le these letters that the outside world has extremes of beauty and tragedy than, any, uh, than anything I've known. Says one particular thing about this world and what this archive is about. Versus the irony of, of Cairo is that it's a closed off place on the outskirts of a busy trading hub. Right? This would suggest that the scrapbook is about Cairo, or that where we're at right now in our archival community journey is that this is about Cairo. And we could do it, t say that via this. We could also say it via a lot of but via a lot of this there's also a like question a disagreement whether it's important to put in our voice right do we put in our voice our interpretation our historical context or is that not our place do we uh do we instead look at communicating a lot of this via letting the object speak for themselves. Do we want to let these objects speak for themselves and let their highlight their voices? Or do we want to, given that this is a community archive, uh, as much and a personal scrapbook all at the same time are we trying to or do we think it's more important to communicate these via letting the text speak as they are 
highlighting all these spaces. Just, just, no, just a smidge big, no, fine. Grr, it's going to annoy me that I can't make those exactly the same size. Right, that's the thing you're struggling to make sense of, because as much as we are archiving for the future, it's very much us in the creation with our voice. Exactly. And then I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, space. Right, given that this collection is largely looking at letters from other places, I think I want this in there. And we could try and put this in across the bottom there. Like right on the bottom of the text here. Right, we could do something like this. I think that's a good enough place to start with because again, I want to highlight that we are not locked in. We are not locked into our decisions yet, which is great. I'm grateful that we are not. But man, we are having to make so many of the right decisions. Right? Doing the archive in the form of a scrapbook, it's even more like a travel journal with uh, memories of more than us. Exactly. Right? This is, this is the community archive par excellence, right? Uh, this is the... Well, we have a lot of the same concerns as an institutional archive. This is as much a subjective, personalized experience of the world uh, that is recording a community's memories as much as it is uh, a statement about uh, about this institutional archive that people are donating to that has a whole bunch of other things associated with it. But like, so right, these are, this is a personal experience. I love that photograph, uh, that's a, but that's a personal experience. This one is more of a location-based one, and then these are all archival records. Right, archival record, archival record, archival record, one, two, three. With this framework, we don't currently have space for that uh, letter from Darano uh, to Cornelius. But, you know, we'll see if that changes. Also, it's a scrapbook, so we want to decorate just a little bit. You know? Hit us with that consistent little pink splotch everywhere, because that's delightful. Can I put anything else in here? Are there more information? Um, There we go. Exactly. It's it's super interesting, and we're behaving according to, right? We're going to try and behave according to archival best practices. Archival best practices probably say we want to minimize this a little bit, but I also want to be honest about that story and the experiences to it. So I expect my thoughts on this will continue to evolve and change, and we'll just keep keep exploring it, keep exploring how we want to do this, but I do want to just emphasize, right, uh, 
if someone wanted to take the approach of being like, hey, uh, we just want to uh, make this intensely personal, right? Make this very much an archive of one, an archive about one person and their travels through this land. That'd be a completely valid decision. Like, there's no universe in which that would be an incorrect option. It would just be an option with consequences, and that is okay. Making a perfectly um, sterile document-based archive is also a thing with consequences, so I don't think we need to worry. I don't think we need to be... Um, Super focused on what we think is best practices. Because uh, as long as we're staying within a decent realm, uh, or super strict on doing things like an, like an institutional archive would, I don't think we need to be too, too worried. Let's park that. Can we swim? We cannot swim. Can we blaze through that on our bike and just keep going? Probably not. I assume we're going to be required to go this way, but... Sea Land Transportation Industries, established 1543. Also, if we're treating this... Move materials around. The things that used to be possible. It... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's super interesting. Um, do you know what? Um, Cairo was founded in the modernity, in this same period, uh, in the 500s here. Uh, but that is also clearly the same period in which we have these big cranes. And so we have basically the industrialized modern, presumably hence why it's called modernity, uh, attached to the uh, the sort of particularly old medievally past. Uh, and Dr. Fumio also engages with that medievalism. But then the present is kind of inheriting that medievalism, right? Uh, existing in a world with Polaroids and bicycles but without cranes or the ability to make skyscrapers. Right? What an interesting relationship in the world that is. And bicycles meaning like modern bikes. Like a penny farthing is a different story. <gasps> Can we pet? Oh, please let me pet. My first time petting an animal. I think it went pretty well. Yes! How's the second time petting an animal gonna go? Mm, that time it felt off. I guess I had beginner's luck before. Badly. All right. Third go to the charm. Okay, now I got it back. I'm in control. I can easily pet certain four-legged animals. Yeah. You can pet the goats. Go 
God, you can see the road going up there. All of this. Wow. There's obviously a fight between Dr. Fumio's view and the time of the season of industrialism. Yeah, and Dr. Fumio is living um, centuries afterwards, right? Dr. Fumio lives in the 700s. This was founded in the... Uh, right, he, he lives sometime, um, dies within living memory, so sometime probably around 770, 780 during the war season. But... Clearly was active in, like, the mid-700s in the Season of Plenty. And then... These cranes are from the... Started in the 540s. We need to archive at least pictures and probably recordings of goats. We could archive a recording of a goat. We learned about old technology in school, but not much about animals. What are these strange goat-like creatures? Are they simply goats? Are they simply goats? Yes. They are, in fact, simply goats. We have regarded the goats. Alright, chat. We have so many things left to decide here. Um, but let's get over into a new area and then we'll call it a stream. Right, I think we'll just try and get out of the path out of Caro. Or Caro. And then move on from there. Also, I love... God, there's so many good photographs. Like... I mean, if we're talking about... Like, games where you can take way too much material, and then have to process it. Like, I think this does, uh, exemplifies that perfectly, because you could take a photo of almost anything in this and create a really fun photographic archive for your trouble. I cycled through landscapes, seeing them for the first and last time. I had no idea when I left my home how the season would end, or more importantly, how soon. There is such an I know, right? The the as a photographic archive, getting to explore on a cold, damp day. All of this, I feel true loneliness for the first time. There's wind turbines. Nobody could have described with words how big this world is. How it goes and goes. I passed through it, where others passed before me. There's functioning wind turbines. Wait, hold up. Those wind turbines are working. Alright, well, um, I think... We are going to have to figure out why the heck there are functioning wind turbines in this world uh, next time. Because, yes, unfortunately, uh, I think we are pretty well out of time, and that is a phenomenal little stopping point. Well, Chad, I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed that, because I sure did. But God, there's so many good archival decisions to be making. It's so cool. Support this game, folks. It's 10% off right now because of uh, the launch discount. So if you like this, please do consider picking it up and supporting the devs because they obviously deserve it. Because holy moly, that was delightful. I think we're going to be back with this on Tuesday because I just want to, I want to play more of this game. I want to play so much more of this game. Hey, Leah, you did not talk too much. You did not, you did not talk too much. You are also in this field. Uh, so your expertise is equally appreciated. It is so delightfully and chill, and they're ask they're making you make all the right choices to communicate the 
like, core challenge, right? There's a lot of things that are, like, not how archives function, but... Or not how, uh, I guess, organized archives function. But, in terms of making you ask the right questions and consider what stories are of significant value to be telling, this is perfect. This is, this is nailing the energy so well. And so we're going to be playing more of this. I think I'll put it in the stream page, but I'm, I think on Tuesday we're going to come back to this. Uh, so, but yes, if you enjoyed this, you'll make sure you hit that follow button if you're just tuning in. Uh, it is a joy to have you all here and participating and hanging out. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday with more Pentiment. Uh, I need to finalize the last couple details, but hopefully we'll be talking to a book historian. So that's going to be an absolute joy. Uh, I hope you will all consider joining us then. Anyway, though, uh, until then, or until the next time I see you all, I hope you all have a good rest of your evenings. Uh, and yeah, enjoy, enjoy your afternoons, enjoy the starts of your weekends, and we'll see you later. All right, ciao.